Welcome to my channel where I go and actually give you my upfront recommendations for new streaming content. And then I hope you stay tuned for why I gave the recommendations. So for the series Shogun on FX and Hulu, I'm going to say if you are a main target audience member for Feudal Japan, Action Adventure, Japanese Conflict, any type of grandiose type of epic type of stories, I'm going to say you should watch the entire first season. Now, if you're a casual viewer, you're not really into the epic tales, you're not into the big epic battles, you're not a history fan of feudal Japan or anything like that, I'm still going to go and actually recommend that you watch at least the first two episodes for Shogun. Now, with that being said, go ahead and actually stay tuned and I'll give you the reasons why I came up with those recommendations. That's how they dominate. The title reveals through the ages. <laughs> Shogun. <laughs> So Shogun is a historical drama series that premiered on FX and Hulu in February of 2024. The first season is going to contain 10 episodes that are roughly about an hour each. Now it stars, first of all, I apologize preemptively on anybody's name that I murder because you know, I totally have no enunciation skills. However, I'm going to try and suffer through it. So Hiro Hiroki Sanada as Yoshi Tornada. That's totally messed up. Cosmo Jarvis as John Blackthorne and Anna Sawai as Toda Mirko. Again, apologies for my pronunciation. It was a bad plan. You plan things badly. But we actually have the story for IMDb as set in the 17th century. The story is told from a perspective of British hero John Blackthorne, a sailor who rises from outsider to samurai while being used as a pawn in Japanese leader Tornaga's struggle to reach the top of the ruling chain or Shogun. So that's what we have for this series. And this series is actually based on the novel Shogun by James uh, Clavel. And there was actually an 80s rendition of that way back in the day, also called Shogun. So we have a lot of der derivations of this particular tale. Now, when I looked at the trailer for this, I figured it was going to have plenty of action. It's going to have swordplay, martial arts, all of that type of stuff, which I love. But now I'm also going to actually feel like the storytelling was going to be very big for this, right? It's going to be epic, grandiose type of aspect of things. And that can be kind of a hit or miss for me, depending upon what type of story is being told, if it gets too complex or what have you. So kind of like a little in between. However, I'm always intrigued about learning about other parts of the globe, other parts of Earth and their history and how they go ahead and actually tell stories of their past. So when I go and actually put all that together, I'm going to go and actually say I'm a target audience member for this type of series. The reason why I give you that is because I think that you should always know the perspective of your reviewer when you're going to actually take it into somebody's opinion, because I watched the first two episodes of brand new streaming content just to see if it's right for you. I watch it so you don't have to. If you like how that sounds, do me a favor, click like, share, subscribe. And now let me get into this review. So after watching the first two episodes of Shogun, I'm going to go ahead and actually liken this a lot to either like the Game of Thrones or Vikings as far as the grandiose setting scale and storyline, but set in feudal Japan. So that's kind of contextualized of what you're looking at here. So my thought process is on the first uh, couple episodes. Uh, first of all, understand that from a language standpoint, the best way to watch this series, like you can actually watch it all in English where... The English parts between like John Hawthorne and the Portuguese and things like that, that's all in English. But the there is the, the best way to watch this, I believe, is to go and actually watch it where the actual Japanese language is being spoken and you go and actually read the English subtitles. Now, I understand it's going to be a little bit complex to go ahead and actually follow along, but I think you get the real emotions of all the actors and actresses within a Japanese language. So I would encourage you to watch it in that manner. And that's something that you want to know up front. <laughs> There, there's obviously a big thing going on a war faction between the Dutch and the Portuguese and what's going on with them. And then there's also the aspect of the warring within the Japanese regions in the area and the, the emptiness that's left behind the ruling class the i forget the name of his title or whatever but there was like kind of like a, a overlord not an emperor or anything like that but he was kind of like the guy that kind of kept everything in line he passes away and now there's five like regions that are trying to go ahead and keep 
maintain their particular power and try to keep everything good. And so there's conflict there and everything that's battled within there. And so there's a lot of different conflicts and different personalities and different things to go and actually take into account in this series. One of the things that you notice off in episode one is the defiance of the John Blackthorne character. Like you would think that going to a foreign land that you would go ahead and, and not knowing the language or anything that that nature that you would be more uh, humble and, and being uh, just just being a, a lot more of uh, a little bit more desperate in the way that he comes about the way that he finds himself on that land or whatever. But he's actually a very defiant figure, which can actually be very divisive. Um, and I kind of find myself various different ways kind of toggling back and forth between, oh, admire him and then also just kind of. Uh, like no really who are you and so that he his character is kind of set prominent and and really kind of driving the story forward obviously there's a lot of world building and a lot of uh, customs to go ahead and actually get within there kind of set it up for you so in episode one you have a lot of things that you're trying to get used to and understand that's happening in uh, feudal japan back in the day when you go ahead and actually go into episode two you start to notice the bigger uh, concentration on religion, imperialism, and nationalism that this series is going to really entail. And there's so many different personalities, thought processes, philosophies, all that kind of stuff that's going into this, that you really are going to have to pay attention and really understand what players, what's driving them, their motivations, all that kind of good stuff. Episode two really does a good job of bringing that home. Uh, it's obviously a complex political story that you're really going to have to drive and see all the various different players and what they mean to the various different topics. And really what I got, when I got done watching the two episodes, I knew that I could just go and actually say, I know I'm not smart enough to have captured everything. There's a lot of undertones. There's different cultures, philosophies, thought process. And there's some very complex writing here that I can catch everything. But I think I caught enough to go ahead and actually really understand what this series is trying to do going forward. And at the end of episode two, I really thought that I have a good grasp on what this series is going to do going forward. So those are my feelings from watching the first two episodes on there and just breaking it down as far as my three main components of storytelling, acting and some intangibles. So in regards to the storytelling, the building of the story and this world is kind of slow and deliberate because not a lot of us, especially us North Americans, we don't have a lot of context for ideologies, customs, and things like that that happen in Japan and in most of the rest of the world, to be honest with you, we're very much... Um, especially America in the United States of America, we're very centric as far as understanding our customs, philosophies, our history, things like that, and kind of a little ignorant of the rest of the world. So the story building here has to be deliberate to go and actually train, uh, uh, attract the main audience that they're trying to get in most of the North American audiences. And I think the, the story is very deliberate and slow in the very uh, first two episodes. Do not be fooled by our politeness. Our bows, our maze of rituals. They really need to go ahead and actually kind of let you know what the societal expectations are to kind of get you into the flow of why things were done the way that they were done there. In the storytelling, you do need to go because the pacing is actually done very well for what they're trying to do, but be prepared for maybe a few action sequences here and there and things that are excitement. But for the mo most part, those first two episodes are slow moving to set up the characters. They give you a very character driven and story driven, but you are going to have some lulls in there. You need to go and actually really read and conceptualize because I believe the, f the, the episodes that are after the first two are really going to lay into the action and things that are going on or what have you. There are some really good action sequences, but just kind of be aware that the pacing is a little bit slower and deliberate in the first two episodes. So the way that they built the story, the way that they build uh, the character, Characters, the way that they go ahead and actually tell and pace everything out. I'm going to go and actually say storytelling for Shogun is about a B plus. For acting, I'm just going to be point blank truthful. This is a very well acted series. Uh, acting veterans like Hiroki Sonata, who I've actually seen in plenty of films, he is awesome on the film. Every time I've seen him, he brings top notch. Uh, Cosmo Jarvis is very good in his role as John Blackthorne, and he really brings it on there. He really kind of dances that, that level between liking him and hating him, and really is good on that. Uh, then you also go ahead and actually see in the way that uh, Ana Sawai is going and actually pulls off the Toto Mar 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 Mariko? Mariko? character i'm gonna go ahead and go with that and apologize again but she's actually very good in this as far as you can see that she's danced between both worlds and things like that and i really like the way that they portrayed her character and even everybody else even if you're a bit character in this series you could tell that there was care it was well 
cast and everybody's part no matter how little it was played to the hill and i very much liked it so for acting i'm gonna go ahead and should give it an a some of the intangibles things that you just can't qu quite quantify but really have thought process rolled around the head uh the period accurate costumes and sets were phenomenal you can tell that they spent a lot of time creating production to make this as real as possible for this way back in time type of piece on there so that was very well done I think the customs aspects of thing is something that, again, I've mentioned a couple different times in this review, but it's something to really pay attention to because things that we go ahead and actually don't really always understand, and by we, I mean like most North American audiences on there, on there really kind of understand where the modern day Japanese people, as far as being so polite and being so enthralled with honor, there's actually, you can see that it's steeped and ingrained in the culture and they really kind of bring that home to you of like this is part of their dna who they are i believe shogun did a very good job in kind of getting you to understand where these philosophies come from and you know how they go about it now the other aspect of this is i don't know this for a fact but i kind of feel like this story is very similar to the british version of like king arthur because king arthur is disputed if he actually existed and if he did you know who he was other stories accurate and things like that and excalibur and lancelot and and camelot and all that kind of stuff in there you know how real was all the stories and things like that i feel like this story is very similar to that not to say that this is make-believe or anything like that but i think that this is probably a, a very romance aspect of the japanese history that a lot of people study it and and uh, find stories that maybe are allegorical or that people are really trying to go ahead and actually conceptualize, you know, did this happen? Who did it? And, and things of that nature. So I would go ahead and actually say that this, these are stories that are designed to go ahead and actually really show you the, a lot of good positive characteristics within Japanese culture back in the day. And then also some things that, you know, challenges that they had with inner civilization back in the day or what have you. So I believe this is very similar to the way that people look at King Arthur and things like that. In my final aspect of it, just again, to validate what, I, what I'm telling people is that for main target audience members, people that are into all of this type of stuff, whether you're into epic battles or feudal Japan, Japanese history, or you're a fan of uh, grandiose adventures and things like that, I'm going to say that you need to go and actually watch the whole season because the love and the care that went into the series is evident. The first two episodes are very story driven and they're meant to set up the rest of the series, but the scenes that are there are acted very well. The story is fleshed out. They go and actually give you good dialogue and from what I've seen as far as some of the action on there, it's going to be handled with care and it's going to be awesome. It's a rich story. You got complex characters that seem to be setting up for um, a phenomenal thing. And I believe target audiences are going to love that aspect of it. For casuals, watching the first two episodes is going to be good because one, production value is high. So you're not going to be bored. But the biggest thing that you want to go ahead and actually do is kind of dealing with some of the slow pacing parts in the show, at least for the first two episodes. And then having to really go and actually pay attention to which language differences because watching it subtitled and things like that, it can go ahead and actually get a little jarring or whatever but if you're watching it like week to week on fx as it comes on or if you check it out on hulu on a streaming platform on there you'll have the time to go and actually take it in because i believe this might be a series that people are going to talk about for a while so again for many target audiences watch the whole first season casuals give it a two episode watch and that's what i have for shogun now on fx and hulu check it out <laughs> If you stay for this entire review, I appreciate you. I really do. I love going ahead and actually watching something like this. This show, I think, is going to be really awesome. But if you have any types of things that you want to go and actually give me feedback on, go ahead and actually comment below. Otherwise, give me a like, share, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. Maybe go ahead and actually give a uh, check out to one of my other videos that I've been reviewing on. And until the next time, I'll highlight you. Take care of yourself.